Hi everyone, this is Mo Volans for Audio Tuts, and in this series of videos we're concentrating on subtractive synthesis. In the first video I looked at oscillators and I gave you a few tips and tricks and problem solvers for people that are just starting to make their own sounds. So in this series of videos I'm assuming a certain level of knowledge, I'm assuming that you understand what oscillators are and filters and envelopes and LFOs, and I'm attempting to help you as you start making your own patches and synth sounds. In this video we're concentrating on filters and specifically the low pass ladder filter here in Thor, but this is really relevant to any analog style filter that you might be using in any synth, so don't worry too much about the actual instrument I'm using. I'm just gonna show you a couple of problem solvers, a little bit of a tip, and some ideas for using various filter modes. So first of all, I wanna talk about resonance, because it's something you're gonna use, and it's something you're gonna wanna dial in as soon as you hit the filter. Um, here I've got a really simple single analog style oscillator going through a low pass ladder filter and this is a typical traditional analog setup. As you can hear it's a really basic sound. I'm going to sweep through the filter now. When you start to add resonance there's one thing you'll notice straight away. We lose some of that full sound and we lose some of the level and that's because we're adding a peak. Resonance really adds an extreme peak, and as you add this peak, you're going to lose volume in all other areas, so you will notice the level lower, and let's see that in action now. You can see as I raise the resonance, we do lose a certain amount of level and punch, and really the frequency response changes as well, so we lose some low end and some high end as well. Now some synths are going to offer a fat mode or a super filter mode or a fat filter and this automatically compensates for that loss of level. The ES2 in Logic for example has a fat filter mode and you can just switch this on and off and it will automatically raise the level as you raise the resonance. But here in Thor and in a lot of synths you haven't got this luxury. So really you've got to try and um, compensate using something else and we're gonna use the drive control, and it's just left of the frequency. So as I raise the resonance, I'm gonna raise the drive. And you can hear that pretty much compensates for that loss of level. Now we've got that lovely acidic squelch, but we haven't lost any punch at all. And as we go further up the field, and further up the resonance value here, we can add even more drive. So there you go, that's how you can fight that loss of level when using high resonance values. Now on the subject of high resonance values, I wanted to talk to you about something called self-oscillation. Now you'll notice here that there is actually a self-oscillation mode and you can switch it on and off. But in some synths, self-oscillation just occurs when you've got high resonance values. In Thor, and especially in this filter mode, you can switch it on and off. Now what is self-oscillation? Well essentially, when you turn the resonance up to a certain level, the filter itself will become an oscillator. This means that you can turn the actual main oscillator off and you're still going to get a sound from the resonance itself. Now I'll demonstrate this now. So if I turn the self-oscillation on, and I turn the resonance way up, and I'd suggest turning the synth level down here, or you might blow your speakers up. Now we could actually hear the oscillator running there as well, but to prove that the filter is actually self-oscillating, I'm gonna turn that off now and show you the filter self-oscillating by itself. So there you go, it's actually creating its own sound. So there's no actual oscillator there at all. What you can do here is if you're building an effects patch is dial in something like a noise oscillator and this can be really great when mixed with the self oscillation effect. Great for effects patches and a great starting point for sweeps and washes. Now we don't just have to stick to low pass filters, they are great and they are traditionally very analog, but a lot of synthesizers have got a lot of different modes you can use. 
Now, of course, we've got a state variable filter here where we've got band pass and high pass, and these are also pretty traditional. We've got a notch and a peak in there as well, which you might find under the sense. But if you look at the other modes, we've got comb and formant. Now, this is going to vary instrument to instrument, but definitely search out these different modes because you can get some great effects. The comb filter here, for example, let's go back to an analog oscillator. It's going to give you really extreme flangey, phasery type effects. And the formant filter gives you vocal effects. Great for contemporary dubstep style bass sounds. So the three things we really concentrated on here, how to compensate for volume loss when using high resonance modes, how to use self oscillation when it's available in the synth you're using, and remember to look at other filter modes apart from the simple low, high and bandpass filters. Hopefully this has given you a little bit of an introduction into the basics of filtering in your subtractive synthesizer and your virtual analog synth. And next we're going to be taking a look at envelopes. I'm going to give you more tips and tricks in that area. And then in the next series of videos, I'll move on to more advanced tips and more advanced techniques for using these areas.